Hello and welcome to OpenCV Basics. George here. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to build our own version of OpenCV using the GitHub repository, as well as CMake GUI, and then of course Visual Studio Desktop Edition to pull it all together. Now you might wonder why you need to create your own version when you can go to OpenCV's website and download the latest one. And if you remember, that's the kind of installation we covered in our first video for this series. However, when you're dealing with other libraries, such as the Contribute library, which are not part of the core of OpenCV, you're going to need to build your own. Therefore, make sure you do a quick search on your favorite search engine for OpenCV GitHub. In the GitHub repository for OpenCV, you can either use GitHub if you'd like to to download this, or if you don't have it, you can also go ahead and directly download it straight from here. To download it, just click the Download Zip button right here, and of course it will begin a download. Now, for us, we're also going to show you how you can bring in the contribute libraries, which are basically very early implementations of certain kinds of functionality that's just not ready or proven yet to be in the main OpenCV project. To get to it, click on the, basically the user in this case, which is it sees, and in here, you'll see the OpenCV contribute. Go ahead and download this zip as well. Now, once your downloads have completed, I recommend creating a directory to hold all of this information because it's a lot of files and folders and you just don't want them sitting on your desktop. So I created an OpenCV DIRs or directories folder. I'm gonna go ahead and go to show in folder. And I'm gonna grab both the OpenCV contribute master zip as well as just the OpenCV master zip. Let's cut them and bring them in here. All right, go ahead and unzip these. I'm first gonna double click on one of these files to see what the directory structure is like. Looks like I get a folder created when I unzip them, so I'm gonna grab both, right click and hit extract here. While that's doing its business, make sure you download CMake GUI edition. I recommend the GUI edition, but if you're more elite than I am, please feel free to use the command line one. If you type CMake-GUI, the top link will be running CMake. This will take you to CMake.org's website. Once the website's loaded, go ahead and click download. And then if you're using Windows, I recommend just grabbing the Windows installer right here. Once this is done downloading, go ahead and run it and install it into your system. And what you'll be left with when you're done is if you type in CMake in Windows, you'll have this application right here. Now that we have CMake installed, as well as our directories unzipped, we can go ahead and start setting things up. Now CMake is going to make your life very easy. So once you have this open, there's two fields you're going to want to fill. Now I've already done this just to make sure everything's going to work for us, but the first one is where your source code is. If you click Browse Source, you're going to want to find your OpenCV directory where you have the Contribute Master as well as the CV Master folders unzipped. Now first, we don't care about the Contribute part. That'll come a little bit later. Right now, double click on the OpenCV Master to select this directory and hit Select Folder. Next up, where do you want to build these binaries? So I'm going to click on Browse Build and then I've already made a folder just for it. I call it OpenCV3. I'm gonna select that folder. Now just press configure, and if this is the first time you've set up this particular build, you'll need to specify the generator you're going to use for this project. In my case, I'm using Visual Studio 14 2015. I'm gonna use the 64-bit versions, not the 32-bit ones. Just leave everything else pretty much as it is. Hit finish, and over the course of a few minutes, it'll build everything for you. If you get errors during this, you probably failed to put the right directories here in the source code portion. So just go back and make sure you check it. Finally, when it's all done, you're going to have a whole series of different options that you're allowed to select. Now there's only two right now that I really care about, but you may care about other ones and you're going to have to research that on yourself. For instance, if you want to use CUDA, you might want to select the CUDA stubs portion. If you want to build the examples out, which I do, they're great and wonderful and make it easy for you to follow, but just go down and make sure that you're selecting the different options that make the most sense for whatever you're trying to do. Now, one thing I would hesitate on doing is build OpenCV world. I've had several problems creating my, uh, my OpenCV library files if I select this term. For some reason, it just my linker doesn't work and nothing seems to build in Visual Studios. And it's really not something you require. All that OpenCV world does is, well, just makes things a lot easier for you. OpenCV World basically becomes one library file you include and you can ignore individually adding them in your project later. Now, if you want to include extra modules into your project, this is the flag you're going to be modifying, the OpenCV underscore extra modules path. Click on this, hit dot 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 to open up the directory, 
and then travel to your OpenCV Contribute directory, and then choose your Modules folder. I'm going to select that folder right there. Now, once you've added that folder in, press the Config button again. This will take just a few moments, and when it's done, you'll have a few more options because you've decided to add those extra modules into your project. If you're a keen observer, you'll notice several more options have been added to your program, such as the OpenCV Contribute World, which I am not going to select because I've been having issues with compiling everything out if I do check World. However, I do recommend that if you have a moment, give it a shot yourself and see if your system is more stable than mine. You'll notice that the newest options are all in this sort of salmon color. If you scroll on down, here's everything we'd already modified before. I have made no changes, but if you did, Go ahead and click the Configure button again, just to make sure nothing new changes. I'm going to hit Generate now. This process can take a little bit of time. What it's doing is within that OpenCV3 folder where we told to build out our binaries, you'll notice now it's populated with quite a few files and a lot of information. This is generating for us our entire project that we're going to use inside of Visual Studio to well, create our library files, our dynamically linked libraries, and just about everything we need to work with OpenCV on our system. It's done generating, so if we take a look at that folder, we'll notice we have our own project directories in here, our own Visual Studio project directories. Go ahead and double click OpenCV.Solution to load up Visual Studio. Now this can take a while, so make sure you're patient with Visual Studio loading all these different solution projects in. Another thing to note is, if you decide for some reason that you modified these settings improperly, what you might want to do is go to File and then Delete Cache. This will forget, basically, all of the different options you've changed. You'll have to go through this entire process again. So now we have Microsoft Visual Studio Express open, and we're going to have to build things out. Now you'll notice there's a lot of things to build, and we're not going to go in here and click on each one individually. Instead, OpenCV, or CMake, has given us a very quick and easy solution. So I'm just going ahead and collapse some of these really quick. Scroll on down to the bottom, and in here you'll notice there's an All Build feature. Now we're going to be using this, and we're also going to be using the CMake Targets portion of this. So first, on All Build, Make sure that you're in X64 if you're using this version or the 32-bit version. We're going to build both the debug and release versions. So right-click, hit Build. So what we'll notice in here is we have some new folders, such as lib. If we go in here really quick, we'll see we have a debug area, and then it's being filled with these different files as it's building out. Of course, make sure you check the progress of your build. As you can see here, it's going to take some time. So once again, just sit back and wait. And here you can see it generating all these different files on the side. We're going to be doing this for both the debug and release versions. So walk away for five minutes, come back, and then start up the release version. Now in my case, it looks like I had quite a few NVIDIA GPU computing errors that popped up. So what I'm going to want to do is go back into CMake and see whether or not I had accidentally added any NVIDIA options that I really don't need to support. It does look like there's quite a few CUDA options that for some reason were enabled. So I'm going to go back in here and start removing those from my build. There's no reason for me to have them. I don't plan on using CUDA at the moment. I'm going to make sure I click with CUDA off so I don't have to worry about that happening again. I'll do one final pass to make sure there's not anything I'm missing here. It's really important you take the time to go back and make sure the entries that you don't want are removed. As you can see, this whole build portion takes a while, so you want to make sure it's right. I'm going to go ahead now, close out of Visual Studio. I'm going to hit the Generate button again to make sure it regenerates everything necessary. Now when it's complete, I'll come back into my folder and open up that OpenCV solution again. Now I shouldn't have to worry about all that additional CUDA stuff in here. Turns out I had forgotten a while back ago I was actually doing some development with CUDA, so it had picked up on some of my installs, and that's why it tried to include them in my project. Most likely for you, that's not going to happen. Once again, you're going to have to be patient. Now I'm waiting for this all build to finish loading and initializing before I can begin. Of course, I'm in X64, debug, right click and build and then sit back and wait again for this to finish so 
So there we have it, the debug version's finished, everything builds successfully. So this just goes to show you, don't freak out when your build fails, just go back into those make file settings and see if there wasn't something on accident that was enabled that you're simply not supporting. Next up, go up here and choose the release version. Go ahead and click on all build, right click and build again. So what we're doing here is creating two versions of our files. There's going to be a debug version as well as a release version. We can tell the difference between the debug and release files just by their name. So if we go in lib, not only is there a debug and a release folder, but within here, there are going to be such as the OpenC, where is it? OpenCV Core 310 with a D on the end for debug. Here we can see that the release versions are already being generated. Here the core version lacks that D suffix on the end. And of course, we just need to sit back now and let Microsoft Visual Studio build out this project. Great time to walk away and come back in five to 10 minutes. Now that we've built with both the release and debug versions, we're going to go back into the CMake target selection and go ahead and right click and build the install portion. I'm now going to click on release, go to debug, right click and build install again. Hopefully everything succeeded for you as it did with me. If we go into our OpenCV3 folder, you'll notice you have a new folder called install. Double click it. In here is everything you need now to start working with OpenCV. This is equivalent to the file you could have downloaded from OpenCV's website and immediately started working with on your system. If you go to include, we have the OpenCV and OpenCV2 folders as expected. But now we'll notice we have quite a bit more information in here, and that's because we added those contribute libraries to this build. If we go to x64, vc14, under our bin and library folders, what you should notice are two sets of dynamically linked libraries, one for the release version and one for the debug version. Make sure you have both of these, otherwise you might have not set something up properly, and you probably forgot to choose debug and release between builds. Now rather than waste more of your time, I recommend you just watch the rest of this video that I'm going to put up on the screen. Here I cover how to make sure your properties of your project are set up properly, that you're linking to all the library files, the DLL files, that you set up paths in your system to properly link to these files when they're created. And that's pretty much it. You've now created your own version of OpenCV customized with you know all different kinds of parameters that you saw fit to add, such as the contribute library or maybe CUDA or MATLAB or all the other ones out there that might not have been packaged with the original one you downloaded before. Remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video or other videos in the series. Please leave comments below on other things in OpenCV you would like to see me tackle in future videos. Thanks again. Bye.